I don't think even a young child, well, a young child or an old person like myself doesn't think of the complexity of language and speech. We just do it mm -hmm. and we do it flawlessly under most circumstances. There are certain diseases that impair that, but in, uh, you know, a couple hundred different languages and dialects, maybe hundreds of different dialects, people are speaking all over the world and communicating with one another. And it's the most natural interaction people have. Even strangers, you'll say hello to them on an elevator or depending on where you are and your personality, even on a street. And mm -hmm. um, we communicate with one another. And, and so that's kind of the, that end of the paradigm, which is, hey, this is, happens all the time and it's natural and, it, and people do it without thought. But on the other side, we're looking at these complex elements and features of speech, not what the words are, because words are are subjective in nature. We we can learn and choose words. We can train ourselves to speak more fluently or elegantly, even in different languages. But how those words are created are common across all populations. The central nervous system is controlling the, the vocal cords, the power of our respiration, the rate of our respiration, um, the duration of our respiration, uh, how we move our tongue, our cheeks, our mouth, all of those things are the orchestra are the orchestra of speech and mm -hmm. the central nervous system is the conductor and so the central nervous system the most complex motor function that we have um, or speech is the most complex motor function and the central nervous system is controlling all of that self-consciously so you and i are not thinking about what do i have to do with my vocal cords in that, in order for this to be more exciting for them you know how do i raise the excitement level of this you know we don't think that at all. We're just talking in our central self-consciously. Our brain is doing all of this stuff. 